Hey, peace family, peace and blessings. Happy traditional Tuesday. Um, I'm still booking people um, while I'm on here. My next guest for traditional Tuesday is an Ia out of the East Coast, and she's going to talk about how uh, her work around pulling different traditional African spiritualists together here in the U.S., and, I, and eventually, I guess, also to worldwide, of course. And I'm going to be talking with her. Uh, but on this traditional Tuesday, I, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about uh, peace, uh, sis. I kind of want to talk a little bit about, let me get myself together, African American. So, so uh, this morning I woke up and the pop up was Mary J. Blige and I guess the new guy that she's dating. And this gentleman is an African. Uh, I think an African prince or something. He's an African king um, and a real rich African prince, um, according to London Press. Um, that's what they said in the London Press. I don't know, y'all. You know I me. Mean? I don't really ever really know. But what I wanted to do, because I started reading some of the comments, and what I found kind of interesting about a lot of the comments, um, you know, I feel like if Mary J. Blige found someone who makes her happy, whether she he's African American or or Afro Brazilian or whatever, that she seems to be really pretty happy with him. But again, um, this thing around how we see each other starts popping up. And so what I wanted to do, I'm gonna read to you all on here what I posted and what some of the comments were. And I just thought it was quite interesting. Uh, so give me a minute, y'all. Let me see. I'm going to switch screens. Not for y'all, but on me, on my regular screen. Okay, so I clicked on this here, and I also tagged some women. I tagged some women who date African men and some who maybe they haven't. I don't know. And so this first system, I'm always intrigued when people, when black folks start to have discussions on things, and then I are so deep people get on here, but like, why are we talking about this? Because that's what we want to talk about. So one lady said, I don't know, maybe they mad like when black folks date or marry white folks. I don't even know where that come from because we're not even talking about white people. But somehow we made them a part of the conversation. Shug Shug um, says, yes, there's a difference. I always say it's like, it's like a difference between a lion and a domesticated house cat. Um, and then she went on to say, it's like African men are pure and uncut not watered down. It's hard to explain their masculinity and their innate in 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 sense of <clears throat> duty to protect and revere women is the reason I prefer an African man. So what the hell does that mean? I don't know, sis. I don't know. Because I'm asking them, is there a difference between African men and African American men? Because that's kind of like what the post was implying. Um, I'm just reading you some of the replies because I, I didn't write that stuff. Um, this, this same person came back, hey, Leona, and she basically said, so it's okay to hold up African men, yet we are upset when Africans look less favorably on African American or Aboriginal women. Honestly, it means nothing to me because I don't follow celebrities. This sister doesn't, peace, Brother Robert, this sister doesn't follow celebrities, so why is she commenting on the post? The post was about, are African American men dis different than African, African men? African-American men, different African men. That's all it's about. It's not about, if you can't stick to the subject, like, why do you even post on here? So anyway, then another sister, um, it's like Ore Umi, says, I dated a few African men when I was in my late 20s. The main difference I noticed back then is that I never had to wonder uh, where I stood. They were upfront, and their interests, the interest in interest in, they would be uh, open communication. It is not to say that I haven't experienced that with black American men. It just seemed to be some kind of consistency with them. And I get that, y'all. The question that I'm reading from, I posted Mary J. Blige is dating somebody new and the guy's African. I heard all of these comments and so I posted the question, is there a difference between African American men and African men? And I'm reading some of the comments. So these aren't my own. These are just all comments. Another sister said, um, I need to make my screen bigger because I'm a little bit blinder than I thought. Here we go. Bam. Okay. I think this is Josette says, um, is there a diff um, there is a difference. However, I wouldn't say it applies to every situation. Most recent, uh, my most recent experience is 
uh, when they ask you out, they are into you and they pretty much have their mind made up that you are the only one. And, cult um, and the cultural difference sometimes gets in the way. It's the dependency on what they are exposed to over there coming to here. So I guess she's talking about when she's dated African men. Uh, peace, uh, Danielle. That, this, that was her experience. Another sister, Cynthia, said there is a difference between the two, sadly. So she said, thank you, uh, sadly. And then uh, uh, Keys, this is my baby. Keys says, yes, I've been dating an African man going on three years now. I have uh, learned to cook differently, to use different approaches when entering someone's home. And even, um, and even when they enter our home, African men have culture and which comes with value, responsibility, and dependability. Yeah, uh, dependency. Uh, what I can honestly say is that I did not connect. I did not connect with African men the way I do with African American men. Um, however, hold on. However, in my opinion, I do feel more safe with an African man because African American men got more targets on them than an African man. Okay. That's what Sister Keys is saying. Uh, I don't. I, I get that. I just don't know when Amalu Diallo got stopped by the cops when they lit him up. Was they doing that because he was African or African American? I'm not sure. But I guess it means something. And then another queen, Andrea. African men love their women, and you will rarely hear them downplay their own women. She said rarely, y'all. She didn't say never. She said rarely. Um, they are very uh, family oriented and feel. Uh, and feel highly responsible for caring for their spouse and children. They are generally cautious about the women they date. I kind of believe that. But that's just me. It's just me. The question y'all posted today was, is there a difference between African-American men and African men? And I think sometimes people get in their feelings, but I would think it's like saying, is there a difference from men from the South and men from the West? I don't know. You know, regions sometimes dictate things being a little differently, too. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just always good to, um, you know, to, to hear what people think. Um, someone else says she looked different, though. Yeah, my, I said that, too. But I think maybe she had been out drinking or something. I don't know. I'm not saying what you're doing. And then the last sister said, hell yeah. Oh, okay. That was a big hell yeah. So, so far, those are my comments. I don't know, y'all. What do y'all think? Do you think there is a difference? and um, African men and African American men. Um, and I would even say that even with women, is there a difference between African American women and African women? And sometimes, let me just say this, differences don't always mean a bad thing. I think sometimes we, we some of us are dying so much to make us all the same people, but we're not all the same. Me and my sisters are not the same. You know, they do stuff differently than I do and, I, and, and vice versa. So we know that it's okay to have differences. It don't mean differences mean we're going to be fighting each other. It just clearly means that we do some things differently. So it's like making greens. Some people make greens and they put pork in it. Some don't put nothing in it. Some people don't even eat greens. So this was just one of those kind of questions where, you know, just kind of seeing, you know, what the response was. And I just thought it was pretty interesting because... I think to me, for those of you who listen, uh, do you ever feel connected to your African root? That's another question. Do you think, do you ever feel connected to your African root? Um, and uh, I know for me, I do sometimes. And sometimes I feel a little bit more American than I do African. That's my truth. Um, and I think it's okay to listen to people um, when they're telling you how they feel about their African selves. So, for those of us watching, do you feel, um, you know, any, do you feel connection to your African root? And have you ever been in a space where, um, have you ever been in a space where you kind of had a little bit, greetings, Dr. Strong. Have you ever been in a space where you felt disconnected, not because you didn't like it, but you kind of felt disconnected that you couldn't relate to, to maybe something they were doing in celebration because that's happened to me before I went one time to a Liberian association I get invited to a lot of stuff and though they were very inviting and very nice I'm not going to front part of me felt kind of disconnected because they were doing some things culturally and I was joining in but and I was watching them first of all and I felt like damn I don't speak another language or 
we don't do that or you know just in terms of and it wasn't the same as like when you go somewhere and you see like scottish people doing something it don't make me feel like oh i wish i longed for scotland though it's cool but it's just like when you are close to someone that you can identify you're looking for those connectors and i think for when i do traditional tuesdays i'm always trying to help us include myself reconnect to that root because i can tell that we're really really missing that root like, to, for instance, today in class, um, in one of my classes, uh, the young lady was from Fiji Islands, or Fiji, and her, she was saying her, her parents basically, they're not supposed to say this, but basically, they do believe in arranged marriages. And so, um, what, uh, the girl was saying how, you know, why they do this in their tradition, and then when they was talking about their tradition, some of the other black girls was like, well, we don't do that, but they didn't even understand why the young girl's family is doing that because it's bigger than just you falling in love with whoever and then having some kids, but you're not really able to build of like a real family. So it was kind of really interesting to hear them. Hey, Shug, I just got finished reading your comments, sis. And uh, that more like a domesticated, uh, <laughs> hey, sis, that was uh, something else. But I thought it was a pretty good comment. But I was wondering, do you ever feel maybe not as connected to... Uh, Africans from the context. I use the term, what's the difference between an African man and an African American man? It, it, are there any differences? Um, and uh, yeah, right on. Um, do you ever feel any kind of connection or do you ever feel like, let's say connection, do you have any misconnections? Is there anything about the African experience that you feel, peace brother Michael, that you feel like you're missing? Because I do feel like, even though I get invited to all their stuff, I really do feel like I'm missing something in my own culture when I'm around Nigerians or get, I'm around a lot of Ghanaians, um, you know, just different Africans, period. And even though they're like a Liberians, they're like, you're our, you're our peoples. Something in me feels like I'm missing something. And did you, have any of y'all ever felt like that in your journey towards your African self, African-centered self? Do you ever feel like, wow, I feel like I'm missing something? Hey, good evening, Tina. How you doing, sis? Um, so, and I don't know how many of y'all seen the post, but I did put up a post and asked where there a difference. And, and Brother Michael, if you're still on, I post that question up. Or do you feel like there's a difference between African men and African American men? And I don't know if you could read the comments, but, and I don't think, I don't think the comments were really critical. If I had to be honest, it was more like, yeah, they do this or do that more. But I feel like some of the stuff I was hearing is that, uh, one person said, hey, peace, Sister Christy, I miss you. Um, they was basically saying, um, like, you know, the, the African men. Okay, so you saying, yes. Can you tell me what you think some of those differences are? Can you tell me, Brother Michael, because you're a black man in America. Can you tell me what you think some of those differences are? And I only can say, I, you know, it just really depends. One person said, it really depends on the situation. Hey, peace, Sister Tanya, I think I'm seeing y'all tomorrow. I think. But anyway, I'll, I'll send you a text when I'm done with this. Um, do you think there is a difference between African-American men and African men? One young sister who loves black men, she's right from Sacramento, she was saying she thinks that the black man has too many targets on his back. And I, I wish she could kind of clarify it. There is a cultural difference, not a gender difference. Okay, hold on, Brother Michael. So what, give me like, can you give me like two to three cultural differences but why wouldn't the gender difference be different? Because one of the things I did hear in some of these comments is that African men are more protectors. And that's something in the gender role. Um, they take care of the children. That's in the gender role as a man. Um, and I'm not going to front. I've been with the Ghanaian man. And um, they kind of are super protectors. <laughs> I'm not telling you funny. They kind of get nervous. But... But that's in there. That's who they are as men. And so I have to ch check myself sometimes. But sometimes I get a bit beside myself. And then, you know, I have to, like, line the hold up because this is what he's supposed to do as a man. And But he's super patient. And, like, even if we have a disagreement, I'm thinking he's still mad at me. But he Sorry, fam. So um, that's all. I just want to know, could you enlighten us with that on here? Is that What is that right there? I see the little camera thing on here. Okay, I don't even know what that is. I'm sorry. Let me go right here. Maybe this will help me. So, no, well, maybe that's not, okay. Wasn't sure I seen some little camera thing. I'm like, you trying to come on the camera? But anyway, so um, I just kind of want to like, kind of throw that out there and see what it is. Oh, it is you. Hold on, bruh. So, 
I don't know if it's going to let you on, but if you're on the Android, you should know this, but if you hit your rotate button, it, is, it should let you come in. But anyway, I would love to hear what you think about that. Because some of the comments, and again, y'all, I'm just going to hit some of these comments real quick. Please, dear sister, I'm going to hit some of these. Let me, let me go back over here. So some of the comments, while we wait to get the dear brother on, uh, one sister saw him said, I don't know, they mad like when white people date or marry white folks, which... I don't even know this affinity chick. Like, I don't even know why she had to put anything on here about white people because I was talking about African and African Americans. So uh, I hate when people respond to stuff and it's not even in their lane. Like, she may need to go to another post. And then Sug, Sugar Sugar says, I felt like, oh, she got a comment on here. Okay, let me try this again. Hold on just a minute. Hold on, y'all. So Sugar Sug basically said, yes, there's a difference. I always say it's like the difference between a lion and a domesticated house cat. Now, <laughs> Shug, let me tell you something. That made me chuckle, but I can kind of see what you mean by that. Um, let me see. She said, I feel like Americans, American Express, uh, the American experience, I'm sorry. Uh, we missed the family structure in terms of extended family, elders, councils, etc." Okay. I don't disagree with that, Shug. Because I think sometimes, well, I'm going to say yes in, in today's society, especially but I, when I was growing up, I had a lot of extended family. That's why I, I think that's why I'm so I make extended families so easily because I grew up with extended families, um, and always being a part of somebody's family like that. You driving? I got it. I got a shit, sis. And then um, you talked about the elders. Um, elders are very important to me. That's why I cuss you out on them. Um, and then it wasn't rotate. Uh, it wasn't So don't rotate. Just hit your button one time, Michael, and then invite yourself back in. Because if you turn your phone to the side, that takes a rotation. Not you talking the phone put your phone to the side that's what you got to do and then once you do your phone like that this period then okay maybe you get me i'm up here doing all this talking and you probably like i don't fix that sis because i sometimes i just keep talking because i'm a talker sorry y'all um so sugar I, I do feel you with that i do feel you that's why i thought your response was so interesting sugar also said this the other part of your statement sugar you said it's like america it's like african men are pure and uncut not watered down it's hard to explain. Their masculinity is and their innate sense of duty to protect and revere women is the reason I prefer an African man. Now, that's what Shug said. And, um, yeah, I, I kind of get that, too. Because I, 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 like, I, like I like men who are men. I don't like emotional men. I don't like, excuse my friends, bitchy men. I like manly men. You know what I mean? I, I do. I do. I like brothers that do stuff with their hands and, you know, but that's just me. I don't like men who complain and, 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 you know, complain all the time. I'm not really good like that with men. Um, and then, um, then one sister says she doesn't follow celebrities and it's kind of like, well, why are you on this post? Like I didn't, I know I didn't tag this person. Okay. Then another sister said, I dated a few African men, uh, when I was in my late twenties, the main difference I noticed back then is that I never had to wonder where they stood. They were upfront with their interests and they were uh, open communication. Uh, that's nothing to say I haven't heard. Um, I haven't heard, I, mean, I haven't experienced with black American men. It's just, it's been the same, it's the same consistency. So what she was saying with the upfrontness and all that kind of stuff, African men tend to tell you what they want. Um, where African American men, not as many to her, has been very honest. And I don't know if because some of us live in a time where there's not a lot of pickings, I'm going to be honest, and that, Afri that African-American men don't seem to be as loyal to black women as we are to them. And so I think that may have something to somewhat do with that. I think that has something to do with that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think that has something to do with it. So, um, and I'm not making up excuses. I just noticed that black women, we are really loyal to black men, really, really loyal. And then you'll hear some black men say, it's both ways, but we know it ain't both ways. Like, come on. We know that there's a man shortage, so how can it really be both ways? But I'm getting some really, really good replies because I, I was really looking for not no entertainment or I was looking for us to, some people to say no. And I also, the other part I put on there, please talk to me if you had experience. I don't want it like I heard or, this is what they said. I want to hear like, oh, I've dated them. I've, you know, something. I've been in their world or something. Um, the other sister said there are differences. However, I wouldn't say it applies to every situation. 
And to me, that's probably the smartest thing to say because we're, all situations are not the same. So I really know what she had to say. She said, my most recent experience is when I was asked out, uh, they are into you. You know, when they ask you out, they're into you. They are pretty much uh, have their minds made up and that you are the only one. The cultural difference is getting away sometimes. And that depends on what they are exposed to um, over there before coming here. And that's true because I've been to Africa several times and sometimes they think we all over here living like Oprah Winfrey. Um, you know, and then Real Housewives of Atlanta go over there and they really be thinking the instructions to open my phone, but it didn't allow me to. Did you hit it one time, Michael? Did you already make your phone go to the side though? Like that? Did you just say yes or no? So I know I don't keep repeating myself. Um, so you know, it's not if you hear me. Um, and so because what it tells me is that you declined me coming on. So I don't even know if you're getting that, hey, well, I'm just offering you to come on kind of thing. I don't even know if you're getting that or not. That's why I'm asking you about that. Um, and so, you know, the times I have been to Africa, which has been a lot of times, sometimes people be thinking we're all over here living like Oprah Winfrey and, you know, Bill Cosby or something like that. And so, you know, they have certain expectations. And what I know about Africa, I'm going to be very honest, a lot of them, my phone is not, oh, it's just not rotating, period. Your phone not rotating. Ah, oh, man, bummer, because I really want you to come on. Or could you type what some of those cultural differences are as opposed to gender? When you're saying it's not gender, because you're actually a man, and I really want to hear what you got to say. <laughs> um, the other thing is, is that um, I know a lot of the Africans that I do know here, their main reason for coming here is to take care of family. Like, that is like their job. Like, their job is to come to the U.S., and to help their family out. Like, that's why they're here. And so the only difference I see in that with some, I'm not going to say y'all, but with some black men, they go off into the sunset and they forget the other kids that they had with people before they got rich or famous or got good jobs or whatever, and they really don't take care of those children. It's like they think that's another man's job. A lot of Africans that I've dealt with and, and continue to deal with, they always tell me that my children are my responsibility. So even when they separated from their wo woman, they had the, their kids went to live with their parents' side because no other man wants to take care of their children because it is their responsibility to take care of their children because that's their seed. Like they, I hear a lot of black men talk about my seed, my seed, but they don't be taking care of things like it's they seed, they seed. Where I know that in African culture, you know, most African men when they leave, they have to usually take their kids with them or their children go live with their with their side of the family. So that's why I pose that question today. Um, if African, if, if there are difference between African American men and African men, and brother Michael, who's a brother that I have a lot of respect for and that I trust, he basically said yes, but it's cultural and not gender, and I wanted him to expound on that uh, because some of the stuff I just talked about was gender. Reply, reply, my go to the top and tell it to allow you to rotate. Oh, thank you, Camilla. Because there's somebody else on here, Michael, that want to hear what you got to say. Because I love it when brothers can speak for, you know, themselves. That's like sometimes when I'm talking for black women, I, you, you'll hear me say stuff like some, because there's some black women that we don't share the same stuff. You know, and, and, I, and some of us weren't raised around the same type of black people, because I know I was. I was definitely raised around strong-minded, strong-willed, independent black women. Um, I like who I like. I'm a Nigerian man magnet, LOL. <laughs> Uh, I love the culture, the value, education, or highly intelligent, resourceful. That's real talk. And one out of every five African is Nigerian. That's a lot of Nigerians. I don't know if you knew that, Shug, but one out of five, that's a lot of Nigerians. When I was in South Africa uh, a couple of years back for a month, I met a man in the airport, very good looking brother. And um, uh, he thought I was from South Africa. And... Um, because I have my hair wrapped and everything like I always do. And then when he heard me speak English, he was like, you're an American? And I was like, yeah. I kind of almost got like an attitude like, yeah, because he was like really shocked. And he said, oh, I thought she was either South African or maybe you were a Mandinga, you know? And um, and and uh, I was like, no. And then he said, well, guess where I'm from? And me doing an educated guess, I said Nigeria. And he really was like, I am Mandingo. I'm from the Gambia. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, and so, you know, he was looked like he was getting ready to cuss me out. So, uh, but you know, I mean, you know, everybody got their own little stuff. Okay, let's see if we can make this happen again, Brother Michael. Let's see. Bam. All right. Because uh, their sister gave you a, uh, 
some instruction and I'm trying to see if that's going to help. So you just have to go to the top of your phone and hit the rotate button. So that's what uh, Sister um, Camilla Strong said. So anyway, so I mean, you know, people got their little perks. So Yay! Yay! Peace, brother, how are you? Peace, Queen, how are you? I'm wonderful. So, the comment, the comment, I'm so glad you're on here. Thank you for having me, Queen. Yeah. yeah. So, so the question, the question is, is, I got feedback. That's from here. You. Uh, let me see something. Uh, All right. Let me let me try something. Okay. Okay. You still hear it? I'm still, I'm still here. here. Yeah, I just yeah, over or something like that. Or? Or? No, I had my other phone on and I didn't cut it off. I ended up going to my son's phone who has an okay. iPhone because my Android wouldn't let me come on your live. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, 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 you listening. Follow me on this phone and I'll hang up. up. Sometimes, Sometimes that helps too. Thank you, Miss. But you know, I'm going to feel that from you when you talk. Okay. Well, my, so, so, go ahead, go ahead. my difference is only this. It's cultural. Our African brothers have had to the distinct privilege to grow up in their culture, culture, to understand their culture, to pass down traditions, whereas our brothers here in the Western Hemisphere are striving to learn it. And in it, they are composed of forced cultural ways of uh, the enemy. And remember, you said something very key. When you go study a lot of African countries, their children is their wealth. It's part of their lineage. It's part of their wealth. They protect that at all costs. In this culture, we were groomed, conditioned, and trained to be studs. We were just to be a part of the baby-making process. So it was forbidden mm -hmm. for us in this country to be married. Uh, it was forbidden for us to really protect our woman for a long time, whereas the slave master can go in and out of our woman whenever he wanted to, and there was no say-so within men. And sometimes with that conditioning, and it only takes 10 years to have a generational curse, imagine 400 years. Once, sometimes with that conditioning, once that conditioning becomes rooted in our minds subliminally, even though the righteousness in you want to come out, you become defeated. You know, and we don't help it because we attack each other. The sister attacked the brother, the brother attacked the sister, and we justify our foolishness. Uh, can we get better? Yes. So the African come over here and look at us in our condition. And they were like, it's like being in a zoo. Like, brother, the cage is open. Why don't you just walk out? But for him, the cage has already been open. So this is his walk. But this other person has been conditioned to be caged mentally. So you will see the disrespect in one to the other because there's a lack of understanding. At the end of the day, we still men. You know what I'm saying? But one is more in tune with his manhood opposed to the other and the responsibilities that accompany with the manhood. Okay. okay. All right. So, right, so that being said, said, is there anything we can learn from? Because African men, African like, first of all, African, African culture, culture, when a man, man leaves his when he breaks up on his life, whatever, the children have to go with him. him. Or, or to his family. family. So his side, because men don't take care of other children. Now, I mean, you know, you might have to break up out of your house, whatever. Kids don't have a man. Like, they're very strict on that. You know, I'm trying to get up about it, but they, you know, my baby, my mother, I'm going to go to work. And even when they come here to work, it's just like that in Africa. They ain't over here when they just like, you know, I'm going to go out and back at all. They don't do that. They don't do that. They don't do that. 
Yeah, it's something that we can learn from both each other. We can learn what is it meant when they say that our children is our wealth. Why do they say that? They can learn from us endurance, being oppressed, being persevering through this oppression and still trying to strive to make it work. So it's, it's a teachable moment from one to the other, but the dialogue has to start. The open and honest communication has to start. Look, this is some things our sisters don't want to touch. And many of our African communities, polygamy is the norm. It's not consistent all the way throughout, but it's the norm and most part. And in America, we reduce polygamy to sex. In most of our African countries, polygamy is associated with community building, wealth building, family building. So there's a lot that we can learn from one another, but there's a, there has to be a real table set to have real meaningful dialogue and not to be in opposition with one another, but to be students of one another. Well, so, 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 and because the white man did a lot of horrible stuff to them in their own homeland, like I personally believe us being taken away gave us the chance to be sent to Africa because they don't feel like going to the Africa that's in Africa. We get to go after it. The Glen Falls, I'm talking about like the Belgium. I mean, I learned some stuff when I traveled in Africa. So some of the ones who come here, they usually educate the ones, but they don't feel like they want themselves out of you know, you know, great. I'm usually there, there, there. There's, 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 there's a struggle, struggle but, but I noticed, I noticed that, that the men are really bonded to the children. children. And not in that area, it's my scene. It's like, like no, I'm, I'm taking the scene with me because it's mine. Because mine. Because there's no other man who's going to care for my scene that's my job. Even though they put the all kind of oppression, too. Africa has been great, straight up. They've been they so when I say so it's going to be a teacher for a moment, I also uh, wonder, um, um, because even when he was 45 minutes, I mean, he wasn't talking about you and I. He was talking about those Africans who come over here and become physicists, you know, science and all that kind of stuff. stuff. You know what I mean? He was really pissed off at them for some reason. But he definitely wasn't talking about you and I and the red man's mission. He was like, I don't even have to deal with stuff like that anymore because I got to get to these people who can get me. I get that. So, what do you think about that, Michael? Well, that's the difference, and I, I agree with you, sister. Um, with the portion where our, our African brothers have endured uh, foul and, and oppressive treatment uh, by those who have explored Africa, I can. I agree with you. Here's the only difference. Okay. When you still speak your own language, when you're still in the land that you came from and your cultural values are still there that you can learn from, instead of being stripped and made into being something other than you're not, that's a major difference. So I would love to talk to one of my African brothers and each one, because one can't answer for everybody, but right each on. one would answer uh, to the best of their ability the reason why that that lineage is so precious uh, to him. Um, sometimes it's just that, sister. It's, it's precious. Sometimes we condense or we confuse the precious notion we're controlling them. You know what I'm saying? And that's just a human being thing. That ain't got nothing to do with culture. Sometimes it's a control issue. You got controlling Africans, 
and you got controlling brothers here in America, and it ain't got nothing to do with our culture. That's who they are as an individual. And we got to understand the individual uh, notions opposed to the cultural notions. Um, that's very true. Let me see. I'm getting a lot of stress. Can you hear me now? I can hear you well. of dating is one of our sisters from our original contact. I have they dated a Jamaican, I have dated a Haitian or whatever, but I have never dated that sister. I don't know that experience. Um, my personal experience, and this is to me, my personal experience, I don't see too many of our sisters that are from the continent interested in the male black in America. Now, is that an absolute? No, but from my experience, I haven't seen it yet. You're right, you're right. I, I haven't seen that yet. And um, they want an African. And check this out. I have seen me on the either, <laughs> even on the other end of the spectrum. I have seen some of our African sisters that if they can't have an African man, I've seen some of my sisters with the Caucasian. Rather than with the hey. male black in America. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I think that's a whole other conversation. conversation. I can't talk too much because I'm getting I'm feedback. People said I'm getting feedback. I'm trying to fix the feedback, but I don't know if I can fix the feedback from them. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to talk about second phone, and I don't know what's going on with feedback. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm trying to talk about the feedback. 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 I'm trying to talk uh, I say this, a lot of our differences has been exploited and to make bigger so that we can see each other as different, as a different, uh, as brothers. And all it has to take is a real meaningful dialogue because there are some differences that are good and there's some differences that are not so good. And once we have that real meaningful dialogue with our brothers, who have been born and raised and came over here, we can squash some of those myths because we are the biggest perpetrators of some of the uh, stereotypes that we hear about one another. We are the biggest perpetrators. Well, all Africans do this, and the black and the Americans do this. And we expound on that without having that dialogue. And that healthy dialogue needs to happen so that we can see the commonality in our brothers and even our differences that we can add one on to one to the other. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you, Quay. I'm talking to you again. Thank you, Quay. All right, that was great. I'm so glad that Brother Time did. I don't know what the feedback was about y'all. I'm so sorry. But he made, what I loved about him is that he chimed in. So the question that I posed tonight, about today about Mary J. Blige and her dating as African men, and was there a difference between African-American men and African men? It was just like a real simple question. And a lot of people chimed in on it, very honestly. Some of us get mad when we have to talk about hard discussions because we want to live in fantasy land. But I think that um, most of the comments, dang, they're all except for one person left too, was more about what they thought the differences were. And some of them were really, uh, you know, well, you know, like really good observations, if you would. Um, and then Brother Michael, our brother, uh, 
who I listen to quite often, he chimed in and he talked about, because he basically said he thinks the difference between the two is cultural and not gender. And then when I asked him to expound on it, he, you know, bored it. I like it when people want to come in and talk. I'm, I don't have no problem with that at all. Um, but he basically talked about culture for black folks in America, which is why I do traditional Tuesdays, about like us not having a culture that, you know, that we could say we all understood and live by and how we have, how we have to reclaim all of that. And um, which I thought was was brilliant, you know, the way he broke it down. Gender wise, um, and then Suge also was founded on this. I noticed with a lot of African men in their tradition, she said in Jamaica too, and I know that's true because I work with two young ladies who came over here with their dads, um, that they also take their children when they leave as well. Because I hear sometimes a lot of black men in America talking about they see, but then they'll leave they see, you know what I mean? And some of these men, especially from Jamaica, they came over here poor. But they took their kids with them. Um, and, and then a lot of African men I know too who come to the U.S., they come to make money to send back home. Where they just don't go off to America and start a new life and forget about the kids that they brought into the world. So, um, and your children are your wealth. And so Brother Michael basically came on and talked about that. Which I really love it when black men come on and explain the position that they know from the black men that they are. I mean, they can't speak for all, but I just... I mean, just check, uh, yeah, so she basically said, you know, since African men just check for me more, they always have, me too, me too, sis, I mean, me, even when I've traveled, like, me too, um, and African American men, I don't know if it's because sometimes they have more selection, or, I don't know, I, I think um, one misconception is that Africans don't, ha have not, uh, had hardship, they have had a lot of hardship, and I understand that. I think the difference is sometimes is that, and I, I think the similarities, let me say similarities first, is when black people do stuff to each other, we act like that's not, it doesn't stain us. Like, you know, it's more like, oh, that's just us doing that to us. But it, it hurts even more, I think. And then the second part is that Europe went through Africa tearing up Africa. You know what I mean? I'm traditionally built and they appreciate that. Me too. And you know what's funny? Like, I was raised with a, a mom who was like that. You know, my mother was very traditional, very together with family. My father was not as much because he didn't come from the same background as my mom. You know, in terms of family being everything, you sacrifice everything for your family. My mother was very, very much in the family. And my dad, you know, didn't really learn that, you know, um, until much later, later in life, you know, um, when he tried to step his game up. So... That's why I think that was a good question. I also will say this, being with the African man um, and being a traditionalist, I'm a spiritualist and I'm a traditionalist as well. Um, he, you know, teaches me things that sometimes I don't know and I'm so okay with that. But he doesn't do it from a bossy standpoint. I don't like bossy people like that. I mean, you know, when it comes to, you know, like people making you clap in church and making you stand up and shout because you got to show God you love him, which... If the person is God, like, why the hell I got to get up and yell? Because God should know what I'm doing in my heart. You know what I mean? That's for your pleasure. Like, you can, so you can feel good about all the hollering you're doing. But as a traditionalist, you know, we do all lot of stuff. He helped me with my warriors. I mean, he helps me do a lot of stuff. I have an ancestral altar. I have a lot of stuff. He helps me with that. And he explained to me things in his tradition. You know, that's like, wow, I didn't know you do that. I also get to see how African black people really are in America. Do some of it. like I love okra. That's very African. <laughs> you no, know, just some things that is just very much like we do that too. So do we. So do we. So, oh, I mean, I do know. I just feel like wow, that was a great question. I want to know how people felt about you know the dating of the two. Um, I also uh, brother Michael before he left said he's seen a lot of African women um, even you know they wouldn't date any men out their race, but he have seen them with some white. Uh, Caucasian, as he said, and African, and African with African American women. I just think when when women are dating, not all of us, because I can't speak to everybody. But when we do date out of our race, is not the way you normally think it is. But I think sometimes we have a hard time dealing with that there is a shortage, and if there's a shortage, then you know that there's a shortage on men with with morals and culture and values and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's kind of like you know. Um, it's a hard time for it's a hard for us to look at things that we're attracted to or that we want to have in the marriage to me or in the relationship with the man i do love the fact that africans speak other languages so i'm always trying to learn uh, some of their language i'm really big on like how you say this how you say that blah, blah, you know 
Um, I'm really big on that because language is a part of culture. You know, I love the fact, I love eating African food. I've cooked some jollof. I mean, I kind of got kind of bougie because I started baking the jollof because I can't really get the jollof on the stove. It don't work for me. But the baked kind, sometimes it works for me. Sometimes it don't. I try to make red red. I tried to make, um, you know, the pepper soup and uh, the stew, you know, and all that. I mean, I really do try because I, to me, it makes me feel more closer to my culture. Um, and then sometimes I feel like making a pot of greens and some cornbread that I'm not supposed to have. And, you know, because I really do, like red red to me is very much, is, I don't eat black eyed peas at all, but I will eat red red because it is black eyed peas and plantains. Um, and like, you know, it's really good. So I really do try to stay connected, if you will, to um, my culture. Like I really, really fight and try to stay connected. And um, yeah, mm, sorry family. So anyway, I had a long day. I just want to kind of come to y'all and um, talk about that before I get off of this thing. Cause I did read a lot of the uh, comments and stuff like that. I just love it. And most of them have been pretty positive, but all of them said that there's a difference. <laughs> All of them says, I can't separate language from culture. Yeah, you, you can't. You know, you just cannot separate language from culture. Like, that's a big part of who you are. Uh, before I, I, I exit tonight, um, I really want to figure out, and I'm going to do this in the next couple of days. Uh, guess what I've learned? Africans don't like cats either. <laughs> you know how black people really don't like cats. Oh, my God, you're hilarious. I thought it was a southern thing, a superstition. But I learned that we got uh, that from Africa. True fact. That's real talk. I see a lot of stuff we do. Hey, Miss Patty, I see a lot of things that we do that's like, we do that too. You know, I mean, even from my trips in Ghana and Nigeria and Togo and South Africa, I see a lot of stuff that's like, we, we do that too. Like, oh, okay. So I do get to see those similarities. Um, um, and we, we pick up a lot of stuff. I mean, we, we're t like, for instance, the base that's in your gumbo, that's straight at, that's straight from Africa. That's, that's the okra root. Like most people don't even know that. We know that that's New Orleans, but New Orleans is like one of the most African cities I've ever been in. I mean, they got different kind of Africans down in New Orleans. I always talk because I love New Orleans, but they're very, very much connected to their Africanism. Like they are really, really connected to that. And so, <laughs> I know, I ain't a big fan of cats, I ain't gonna front. I just like, mm mm. I, I, I can't take a cat purring up on me. Like, that's not gonna get. But anyway, y'all, before I check out of here, I am gonna come back uh, because I want somebody to come and talk about Asada. I mean, talk about Nehanda with me, the sister from Cuba that's passed away, who's one of our elders. So I'm gonna try to make that happen. I love y'all. Thank y'all for joining me. Should drive safe. Love you. Peace.